Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to try to uh, build the STM32 development environment with make files. And I have already prepared like a, a clean install of Windows 10. And uh, we're going to try to download all the software that we need. And let's get started. So here we have the Windows 10 environment that uh, I already installed earlier. This is a fresh install. So we're going to go um, and download Visual Studio Code. So all I need to do is type Visual Studio Code. And you can go directly to download there. So that, that click that link and click that Windows button. So I think you have an option if your machine is an ARM. But I'm on an Intel uh, machine, so that's the one I'm downloading right now. And it seems like it auto detects my architecture. Let's wait until it's done. And let's go into the folder where this is downloaded and double click that. And this is going to bring the dialog for installing the Visual Studio Code. And all you need to do is to install the default. Just keep everything default. All right, installation is done. And now let's try to open Visual Studio Code and install some extensions. So I know some of the extensions that we need and that include the C and C++ and as I mentioned earlier probably, uh, we also need uh, to debug SCM32. So we're gonna need the Cortex Debug extension. So let's go ahead and find those extensions and start installing it. So C and C++, this is extension that we want, hit install. So this extension is by Microsoft. And you might also want to install the extension pack as well, and also by Microsoft. Um, you can take a look at the rest, but I don't think we need all of those. So let's go to search for Cortex Debug. There you go. So the first one, Hit install, make sure it's from Marus25. Uh, there are a lot of uh, other Cortex debug extension. Next one is a makefile. It's called makefile tools by Microsoft. Hit install for that. And let me think what else. Um, I think we also need the serial monitor. I know that there is a, people love to use PuTTY or hyper terminal, but this is a serial monitor that you can uh, install and have it integrated in the in the in the visual studio code another thing is called git graph this is very useful if you are uh, you work a lot with um, version control then you might want to have a git graph instead of running it over the command line you can have it you know a graphical user interface um, within the visual studio code so let's take a look if we have everything that we needed. Um, let's, Cortex Debugs is there. And it's in their own installing. And some of the CMake is actually a dependency on, you know, any, any of the extension that we requested. Seems like everything is installed. And yep, yeah, that's basically it. That's pretty much done. All right, so let's go to download MSYS. <clears throat> that's the first link hit the that and just go ahead and directly download the installations which is right there so for you who don't know what is msys so since we're gonna build the project with a make file i would prefer to have a tools that is you know like unix so you can have most unix commands installed in, in, in Windows. So let's take a look at the folder and install this MSYS2. So double click that, MSYS2. And 
same like the Visual Studio Code, just go with the default installations. So it's really look good that you can have a MSYS installed because basically I work with Unix and, and Mac OS a lot. So when it comes to Windows, uh, it's pretty much you can you can run the most standard you know Unix command with that. So what else do we need to download? I think we need to download the uh, Open OCD by um, XPack. So type in XPack Open OCD. And all we need is actually to download the binary. I prefer to download the binary. So um, some people love to, to use uh, installer from different um, community, like there's a 3D chop-in versions, but the one I use uh, is from XPAC. So let's download the latest one. From XPAC. So I'm on Windows, where is the Windows, All right, there you go. And while waiting for that, let's download also um, the toolchain. And for the toolchain, I use the GNU arm uh, toolchain no GNU arm embedded toolchain and hit that link so I know that there is a deprecation notice in here but this um, version 10.3 is is the one that I know works for STM32 so hit that and it should give you the download. I don't know what's going on. Let's take it. Oh, wow. Let's try again. That's the correct link. Yeah, I want to have, I want to, well, I don't want the, in the installer. I just want to, there you go. I just want to have the release uh, binaries so that I can just put it directly into, you know, C folder, C drive. <clears throat> All right, so everything's done. So we got the tool chain, we got the open OCD uh, downloaded. And now, uh, what will be the next step? Let's see. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's unzip this. Let's extract this to and uh, put it on the C drive. Okay. Um, right. So I'm going to remove all of those in the pad. And usually I also remove uh, the versions so that it's easier. So if you upgrade to the, the, the latest version, you don't have to, you know, change uh, anything in your pad within Visual Studio Code or or your system paths. Right, that's completed, but yeah, it seems like there's another folder inside this folder. Okay. Um, well, that's fine. Let's just move everything into this GCR, non EAB, and let's delete the, the empty folder. This empty folder. There you go. All right, let's check. So we got C drive, GCR, non EAB, then we are good to go. Now, next one, let's do the same thing. Let's extract the open OCD. Um, as always, I remove the, the path. Uh, I don't think I want to keep the X pack as well. I'm going to remove that. And also the versions. I'm going to remove the versions as well. There you go. 
and we know that we had an issue with uh, you know double folder in there so we're gonna have to fix that later <clears throat> so let's wait until the extraction is completed there you go as expected <laughs> we see that there is another folder within the OpenCD folder. So let's just double click that, select everything and drag it into the OpenCD. There you go. And delete this empty one. Easy peasy. Right. Right. Checks is there. See OpenCD and let's go to um, the C drive. Where is it? This PC, okay. Uh, this PC, local disk. Let's check that. Yeah, we got open CDM sys, and where's the GCC? GCC is up there. There you go. So that's all uh, we need, I guess. Um, let me think what else. I think that's all. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, so. <clears throat> Let's go ahead. I'm going to show you how to use the MSYS. So that's, that's the MSYS. <clears throat> Click that. So it's basically a shell. It's the same shell like a uni shell. If you type ls, for example, then it's going to show, is it empty? It doesn't show, give you anything. PWD or echo, hello, then yeah, it's going to spit out the word hello. And that's it. And what we need from here is actually a git command because we want to clone the example from libopencm3. So you type git, the command is not there. So we can install it at pacman s git. And type yes for that so that you proceed with the installation. And it's going to download all the dependencies and require packages for you. And by the time, well, hold on a second, there's an error message there. Let's try again. Hit yes. I don't know what happened in there. Uh, it seems like there's a glitch in the network connection. Hopefully, hopefully there's a glitch on the network connection, but let's see. All right, it's looking good now. Yeah, earlier it was like kind of slow. All right, let's make sure that the git is there. So type git test v. Uh, it's showing the versions, which is good. Now, the next thing we need also a, a, a make. If you type make, it's not there. So, we're going to install with a pacman uh, this ash uh, make. Type yes for that. And there you go. Let's confirm that it's there. Make dash v yes so we got git install and also make install now what next next we're gonna try to clone the lib open sam3 example so let's go ahead and find that on the github uh, so type in github.com slash lib open cm3 Slash uh, I hit enter too early, but yeah, we, we were there. So let's let's go there and this is an example. So if you note that this is exactly what we need to put in the git clone command. So type in we are in okay, hold on a second. We are in the home PC. I'm not sure if we're that folder actually exists. So let me take a look in the C drive. Yep, as expected, the home PC is not there. So I'm gonna go with the users PC, which is you know the the default location when I install stuff or clone a project. So I'm gonna move to C drive. So forward slash C, uh, forward slash C is C drive. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, it's there. CD users slash uh, PC, right? PC. Yep. All right. 
Just make sure that I'm there. LS, type LS. Yeah, it's there. Now I can type git. Sorry, git clone https github.com slash lip open cm3 there you go lip open cm3 dash examples and hit enter after that so it's gonna clone uh, the examples from lip open cm3 <clears throat> as you can see here that's a folder right so next command is git well change to that directory first and then we do git submodule in it but first I'm gonna explain to you why we need to do this all right so if you go into the folder and these are all the examples by libopencm3 there is the dependency on the libopencm3 core library which is not there it's empty so the git init command is actually to initialize the sub module needed and then the second command after that you need to update so git sub module update and that's going to do the cloning automatically for you and it's going to populate the libopencm3 folder let's give it some time all right everything looks good let's take a look there you go so it's not empty anymore so i guess we're ready to to go all right so <clears throat> let me close this all right so now in the visual studio code we can try to open that folder so we go to uh, pc c drive where's the c drive there is c drive users pc and leap open cm3 and hit select folder I just put a check mark yes I trust the author uh, the authors of this and if you hit that arrow button this is the exact same folder structure and I'm gonna go since I have the stm 32 f 4 discovery I'm gonna choose one of the example uh, I'm gonna use a mini blink that's the easiest example that we can you know quickly build uh, this is a source code you can read that um, source code is just basically blink uh, one LED on the STM32 board now go back to the MSYS um, I'm gonna change into that directory so CD examples STM32 F4 STM32 F4 discovery mini blink and hit enter and type make and that should build um, the project for you um, hold on a second okay uh, Python 3 is not installed okay so <clears throat> I guess Python is not there Let, let's confirm that Python actually is not there Python dash B all right Python is not installed so same thing we're gonna install Python now um, the command is the same it's pacman dash s Python 3 yes for that almost there all right so python is installed and let's hit make again type make or you can go up and just scroll up and find make mm, what that is oh yes so we need to point where the arm non-eab gcc is so 
all we need to do is, um, if you don't know the command, this is a export um, path equal to dollar path slash, you know, column slash uh, the C drive uh, GCC. Remember, we install in the in the C root directory, and that's where you need to point it to, and hit enter after that, and that should. Um, be it. So what is that? The device doesn't exist. Never mind. I think that's totally fine. All right. So it's building. So if this is the first time you're building with a lib open CM3, then it's gonna take some time because when you hit, uh, when you type make and hit enter, it's gonna build all the libraries, which is you know, you know for a range of MCUs, not just STM32, and it's gonna build all of those and and for the very first time so just give it some time and that should be it well there's an error let me check that error okay the error is actually for um pack 55 xx i don't know what that is but let me try to make and yep that yeah that's that's basically it so the library for stm 3 f4 discovery is already built as you can see here we have the elf of course you cannot read it but you can also the map you can see that well everything seems fine you can check for yourself and the next thing uh, I wanted to show you is actually how to configure the um, how to launch the debugger right so here I don't see the Cortex debugs why I don't see the Cortex debug let me scroll down a little bit here Cortex debugs is yeah, Cortex Debug is installed, and well, let's click again. Let's see if uh, oh yeah, there, there it is. So hit that Cortex Debug, and it's gonna bring you to launch JSON file with the generated file configuration files in there. But obviously, this is not this is not what we want. So we're gonna add new configurations for Open OCD. Choose that Cortex Debug Open OCD and gonna remove this there you go and the first thing you need to do is actually to point where the executable files is and you need to go to slash uh, let me take a look at the folder uh folder name in there i think it's like example examples let's type that in examples uh, slash stm32 slash f4 slash um, stm32 f4 discovery uh, slash mini blink and the elf is called mini blink dot elf so that's where the executable is. So open OCD need to know where that is. So check for the rest. Uh, server type is okay. Config files. Okay. So with the config files, if you're familiar with open OCD, so you need to usually you type in with open OCD that's F and then interface. Um, in that case, uh, stlink.cfg. And then there's also a target that you need to define, which is target stm32f4x.cfg. And that's how to pass the parameter, uh, configuration parameter to open OCD, the interface and a target. Now, I'm going to create another one. We need to point um, GDB's, uh, we need to set the GDB path and also the uh, open OCD path. So create a new file called setting.json and we added cortex debug dot uh, GDB path. Yeah, it's right there, GDB path. And you wanna point it to, remember we installed it on the C drive, so you just Type in C colon slash forward slash um, uh, GCC arm non AB slash bin slash 
arm none yeah, b dash gdb okay and then the second uh, configuration in this setting json is a cortex debug dot open ocd path and you also have that in the c drive so you just need to type in c colon forward slash open ocd slash bin slash open ocd and that's all i guess that's it we have everything so we have a gdb path we have the um yep i guess we we're good to go so we have that and just click that green button to start debugging and we should be good to go uh, kind of <laughs> wait a second let's see uh, what is the error here um, okay let's go ahead to the terminal uh, it says that it can find oh well that's interesting seems like it doesn't know where to find the stlink configuration so I don't think I believe it was in the setting okay so this is what we can do we, we can actually type in the full path okay so let's let's do that so type in c uh, colon slash uh, open ocd slash scripts slash interface slash st link and the same thing for the target c colon slash open ocd slash scripts slash target slash stmd to f4x there you go all right let's hit that green button again and there you have it Ta -da! now you can hit run and that run is gonna run through all of those you can do next step over as you want and of course you can also stop it right and there you have it so that's how easy uh, how long is it like almost uh, 20 20 20 plus minutes to install this that's pretty pretty good I think yeah so <clears throat> let's recap what we did today okay so first, uh, I, ha I have like a Windows installation, like a fresh installation of Windows, so you know that the dependency is there. So we downloaded the VS Code um, software, you know, install it, and then we went through all the extensions. So we installed all of this extension. Uh, you can go back to the earlier video to see what extension there are. Uh, Git Graph, I'm gonna discuss this on the next video. Uh, Makefile tools and serial monitor as well. This is very useful. Um, what next? So we also downloaded the GCC ARM non EAB and the Open OCD release binary from XPack and MSYS. MSYS is this one, which is basically a shell. So that shell uh, you can run most uh, Unix command on it. That would be useful. And since we have the Makefiles, uh, we needed that and that's pretty much it so yeah that's so um you know what I, i'm gonna get you um another thing uh this is an added bonus for for you guys um if you if you look at this terminal uh if you if you hit that small arrow button you see that the power cell and the common prompt so let's see see the power cell so if you run this on the windows and you open powershell this is the exact same thing of powershell uh, so you can type dir and it's gonna show you what is in the directory uh, you can run some unix command like ls and it's gonna show you also the directory this is the exact same thing but now it is integrated into the visual studio code right now <clears throat> let's, let's try also command prompt let's see dear it's working see that ls doesn't work yeah so that's this exact same behavior of command prompt and power uh, powershell now what we want to do is actually um let's get rid of this we want to have msys right here instead of 
uh, having a separate, you know, MCS shell um, outside the Visual Studio Code. So I remember I did this earlier. Let's take. A, I found I found how to configure this thing from uh, uh, Stack Overflow, and let's 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 do that now. Um, Let's type in MSYS2 shell in Visual Studio Code. Easy. Well, you know what? Let's try MSYS, MSYS instead of MSYS2. All right, there you go. I believe this is the first link that we wanted to take a look at. Let's scroll down. That's no, that's not it. Oh, there you go. There you go. So this is the one that we're gonna use. So this is like a uh, how to open MSYS terminal within a Visual Studio Code, right? Now, if we let, let's take a look at the um, the settings JSON now, and and I'm gonna show you how to manually doing it. So if you go to the settings dot JSON and you add um, terminal. Let's see what that is. The terminal integrated. Okay, so type in terminal. There you go. There's a uh, auto completion is there. Uh, integrated, integrated. Okay. Profile windows. That's there. Okay. It's gonna populate for you automatically, and there's a PowerShell command prompt, git bash, and you know what else. Uh, but we don't need all of those because we already have that. So we're gonna just uh, copy this. So we're gonna add this. Well, we're gonna copy this and probably remove uh, all the rest. So copy this and add it to here. Right. I'm gonna call it M sys two and paste all the rest yeah i'm gonna have to remove that because i'm i'm using mc's two name instead of mc's um, 64 and let me delete the rest of this delete that and save it but first i want to make sure that the mc64 is in here all right so let's take a look at the c folder mc64 and go down to the mc2 shell yeah it's exactly there so we have the command we have the right path so i think we're good to go all right so let's take a look at here when you click the drop down there you go you have the mc2 so when you click that and basically you have the exact mc shell but within visual studio code so I can go to um, the example folder, CD example, SDM32, F4, uh, discovery, mini blink, and type make. And it's gonna do exact same thing make when you do it in the end, because it's practically is the same MCS uh, shell. So there you have it, right? So that's pretty much it. And that's basically uh, today's video about um, building the STM32 development environment on Windows 10. All right, so thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video and happy coding.